Now taking his position is Assistant Division Commander, Brigadier General James W. Lively. So for number 16, we're going to send you off. I know General Worth is going to have some comments. 
you got a big day today, but uh, Master Chief Cox, thank you. Uh, and, and on behalf of General Loom and the entire legacy of this division, thank you for your hard work. And again, Command Master Chief Merriman, welcome aboard, and uh, we're ready to get to work. And so we're going to celebrate y'all today, but I wanted to honor the post and the tradition and what it means to the Marines in this division. And then I'll, uh, and, and I'll close with just, um, uh, just gratitude for what the Chief's Mess does. And uh, we truly, truly appreciate it. And thanks for setting a great example for us. All right? Thank you. At this time, Major General Worth is taking his position in the reviewing area, and we ask that you rise for the playing of arms. Born at the same time, 
joined together during the island hopping campaign in the Pacific during World War II. Together, CVs and Marines set conditions for the successes that we all know about in the Pacific campaign. Sweated together, bled together, organized similarly. In a CB, we have an individual who comes from an organization that is organized in teams, squads, platoons, companies, boots in the dirt and off their environments doing hard things ashore. At the same time, we're contemplating how we organize to make sure that we can carry combat power over extended distances, go into places that haven't yet been. There is no hard stand. There aren't cushy conditions and squaw huts and all of those types of things. You're going to carve out your existence in that place, in that space, through hard work, through a focused team. So when General Donovan came in and said, I have a thought, and I might do something slightly different, at a time we're thinking differently about how we fight, it made perfect sense. And of course, after reviewing the talent that is offered in all these Portfolios. I'm talking to the family. I'm trying to avoid all the jargon and the acronyms. Okay? All right. If we look at the binders and we look through resumes and portfolios of excellence, Scotty Cox rose to the top. And so when General Donovan decided to choose Scotty Cox to come in, it gives us a slightly different look at a time that was important. He jumped in and he brought all of his experience. He had served in Naval Mobile Construction Battalions 1, 5, and 3. He's been an instructor out of Fort Wainini for both the enlisted side and the Civil Engineer Officer Corps. He has served around the globe in austere places. Diego Garcia, Guam, Okinawa, Iraq, Congo, Liberia, Somalia, garden spots. <laughs> Negative. Right? It is indicative of what we ask our CBs to do. It doesn't matter where you go, you carve out a place and a space to conduct operations, which is bringing combat power and lethality ashore to do the nation's bidding when the time comes. So, Scotty brings all of that experience into the Follow Me Division, into the Chief's Mess, and begins to go to work, helping us organize, being integral, being a senior enlisted advisor. Naval instruction tells us that being part of the command Master Chief program, you serve inside of the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy's mess, the collective Navy mess, and then specifically you shape the mess and imbue and inculcate professionalism, discipline, naval traditions, standards, expeditionary mindsets into the formation you're in. And over the last three years, a year with General Donovan, again, emerging from COVID, regaining steam with regard to operations broadly, and then specifically exporting our capabilities abroad. If not for global force management, finding opportunities to take an organization like, you know, Combined Task Group 6212 forward and go out and operate and put to the test operational design and concepts, put them into effective operations in conjunction with the Navy fleet, the Sixth Fleet in that particular instance. But operationally, Scotty helped the division in ways inside of every formation. As we say inside the Navy, our Naval services, down to the deck plate level. He improved our Navy orientation, our orientation program for every Navy individual who serves inside the division. Whether it be medical officers, whether it be hospitalmen, hospital or religious persons serving in our religious ministry teams. The orientation program is robust. It's effective. He spends time there. The commanding general spends time with those individuals who arrive inside of the division. He has spent time inculcating a spirit of unity, discipline, sacrifice, and absolute technical professionalism inside of our chief's mess. During his time, we have produced an additional senior chief petty officer. We have several selectees for master chief petty officer. 
We had eight additional chief petty officers. The reason I bring out those particular numbers is because, again, back to 2021, bringing in someone who's going to give our chief's mess a slightly, a slightly different look. We wanted to get more of the Navy's offering as it pertains to meritorious advancement, promotions in grade on time. We wanted more because we believe that the mission inside of the Follow Me Division, the tasks that we undertake, the global requirements that we oversee, we send individuals inside of our organization all the way to Okinawa as part of the unit deployment program. We serve in CENTCOM, we serve in AFRICOM, we serve in UCOM, we support SOUTHCOM, and we have sent units to support NOACOM on the southwest border. There's nothing that the division doesn't do. There's nothing that inside the Carolina MAGTAP that we don't attend to. Scotty improved our numbers significantly. More promotions, Blue Jackets of the Year, more competition, team competition at the quarterly events. We have the retention, we received the retention, maybe Retention Excellence Award in 2003. In every way, Scotty Cox has impacted this formation. You, through your efforts over three years, I've talked a little bit about why you're here, but what you've done from the orientation through the Chief's Mess into execution in everything that we do, which is always about war fighting, Scotty has, his fingerprints are all over. The Division Combat Academy of Trauma was called out by the Defense Health Agency as the model of excellence for training at the tactical level. The model of excellence for training at the tactical level. The, the Doc Kent Award, okay, the Doc Kent Competition, the Doc Percy Award winner, 2021-2022, all emanating from the Division, all reflective of your investment in time and attention. Then on a personal level, Scott, I'll just tell you, when you look to a senior enlisted advisor, you want a couple things, okay? First, you want them to walk the walk. But when it comes to talking the talk, and then walking into the office at those times and saying, hey boss, you got, you got a couple seconds? And I always knew what that meant. <laughs> it meant that I probably didn't get it right or was thinking about doing something crazy. And Scotty was about to set me right. He was about to come in and say, hey, hey, boss. Um, you know, nice thought, got it, I heard you. But have you thought about it? I think you might have missed this. Well, why did we stop doing something that we were doing before? I just literally probably wasn't paying attention, but I have a directed telescope that can see at the command deck across to the other MSCs inside the MLG, inside the wing, inside the headquarters group, and help me understand, help me see more clearly, and help me focus my thoughts so that can be of service to the division. And when you have 14,000 humans inside the division, it's important. Because like I started, like I said when I started, their families are attached to everything we do, impacted by the decisions that we make, impacted by our Focus on preparing for combat, the inevitability of going to combat. If you're wearing MARPAT, it's not an if, it's a when we go. Folks like Scotty ensured that I was focused, that I was of service, and that the division, therefore, every Marine and Sailor in the division and their families were better prepared for the when we go. Scotty, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for being that individual who would walk in and with you and, and Sergeant Major Caldwell, if he was here, he would have been shaking his hand going, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and Dan Krause is down here right now, and I know that he's seconding the word in general doubt, okay? Thank you for being a speaker of truth. Thank you for being a pro. And you know, I can't say enough. I mean, Veronica's here, Bryn, Sochi, Lucas. I mean, the family's here, and you've got some older kids, and you've got some younger kids. How the two of you do it, I don't know, <laughs> okay? But you've done it extremely well. Thank you so much. Every metric, every measurable for naval excellence inside a division, paired with, bonded with, 
partnered with your Marine Corps brothers and sisters, we're better, exponentially better than we were. And in an organization like this, that's all you're tasked to do. That is the why behind the Master Chief Program, okay? the Command Master Chief Program. Influence, impact, leave the formation better, exponentially better than when you joined them. Thank you. All right? Please, a round of applause for Scott. But I'd be remiss, okay, because I had the opportunity at the end of calendar year 2023 and into the, uh, the early months of 2024, I was faced with the opportunity, faced with the opportunity to select the next command master chief for the Follow Me Division. And again, that binder, those binders and the offerings of talent from the service, from the Naval Service, you know, was brought to me, and as I called through the packages, and I looked at the experience within all of those packages, one of them stuck out and rose to the top immediately. When you take a look at April Merriman biography, again, what you'll see in her biography, she is simply a professional and has been a professional. No one's perfect, but Vince Lombardi said that by pursuing perfection, when she demands it, you'll never get there, but you will find excellence. And her record was dem demonstrative of somebody who is pursuing perfection in all things. She has served with the Force Service Support Group, now known as Marine Logistics Groups. Okay, and I don't want to date you, okay? <laughs> but, but... What that tells you is that from the onset, she has served with the Force Service Support Group, she served with the 9th Communications Battalion, she has served at the MEF Headquarters Group, and she's been the Senior Enlist Advisor and Lead Planner at the Headquarters level for the Medical Officer for the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force. She's been selected and chosen, and she's been a Lead Petty Officer in formations, and that is not something that just happens. You don't just show up, and you're not just selected. It happens because you're the best. It happens because you are the sailor of choice. And that choice is very intentional every time. And when I looked at the arc of excellence throughout your career, it was very, very clear that in order to not step backwards, not lose any momentum in a division that is moving fast, going forward, and will be asked to do more with less, that's just the nature of the Marine Corps. We'll never have enough. We're always going to be asked to make more with less. You need leaders on the command deck that can help you through that decision. She has experience with our amphibious ship. She served aboard OPD, the USS Anchorage. She has time on the ground inside the MAGCAP. She has wing experience on the Navy side. She brings the depth and breadth of experiences that will help the division prepare for its combat mission. And it's a combat mission. That's the main thing. That is the focus. You're prepared for this. You've been purpose built for it. We were talking a little bit earlier. And as you take on these huge responsibilities, there's always that bit of trepidation. Kick off butterflies. It means that it's important. It means that your give a crap factor is way, way high should be nervous. 14,000 humans, brain sailors, most of whom you'll never see at the same time because they're always distributed all over the globe. But you're purpose-built and ready for this. Your mother, your brother, should be very, very proud of what you've accomplished. And I'm excited for the command deck here in 2nd Marine Division. And what we are able to do because of our naval service and the way we operate is plug and play the talent. General Odom, General Lively, Sergeant Major Mendez, and now Command Master Chief Merriman. Boy, I'm excited about the lineup. That's, if you, if you have a fantasy, if you're in a fantasy football, all right, 
fantasy division. It's not fantasy. These are the leadership needs.